Hello everyone, my name is James Jean, and thank you for joining me on the audio guide for my solo show, Eternal Journey. The Lotte Museum of Art inaugurates the program in 2019 with Eternal Journey, and I am very grateful to have an opportunity to create a new exhibition especially for the Korean audience. This show began with the concept of O Bansai, and each new work was created with a specific color and element in mind. Also, in order to introduce and provide some context to my work, we have organized close to 500 pieces of my previous work to give you a sense of where I came from. Please join me as we begin this journey into a world of infinite characters and... Sketchbooks, 1999-2014 to 2014. Drawing is always at the core of my work. On display are nearly 200 drawings from my sketchbooks, and they show an evolution from early figurative studies to various explorations of form and narrative. The early sketchbook drawings of 1999 to 2001 are filled with anatomical and figurative studies. In particular, studies of people riding the subway and studies of my own hands. While in art school, I would visit the Metropolitan Museum of Art and make studies of the sculptures in the European Sculpture Court. Spliced between these observational studies are moments of pure fantasy, inspired by the surrealism of Max Ernst and Salvador Dali, and the caricatures of Honoré Daumier and Otto Dix. The sketchbooks grew to become more painterly in 2002, but soon thereafter, I decided to simplify the sketchbooks and focus purely on line. Almost like automatic drawing, I would let whatever it was that I was observing dictate the movement of the pen. Shapes and lines would overlap without regard for what came before, resulting in layers of accidental collisions and rhythmic intensity. In 2011, I became tired of observing the external world and turned inward. The first drawing, Flora, began as I was trapped in an airplane, and to pass the time I proceeded to weave a dense tapestry of lines purely from imagination. Thus began a long series of drawings that tapped into ancient... Inferno Red Fire, 2019 The descendants scamper about through a wave of flames. A primary source for this painting is the Hell Scroll, or Jigoku Zoshi, a 12th century Japanese scroll painting depicting the multitude of hells in Buddhist cosmology. Like out of a Max Fleischer cartoon, the fire sprites run and jump through the flames, while a scribe in the lower right corner draws out the fantasy in flames. The rubber soles of their sneakers melt and provide fuel for the fire. The Inferno is hungry to consume more hype beasts and to punish them for the... Aviary, Red Fire, 2019 Aviary is a fantasia of Chinese folklore. The composition plays out like a dream, read from right to left, coming from the mind of a sleeping monk who is wrapped in flames. He is literally burning up from a fever dream. The bird priest is inspired by cormorant fishermen in China who don't actually practice their traditional way of fishing with trained birds anymore, but instead make their money posing for pictures dressed in their fishing gear. Similarly, the landscape is more like a stage that is decorated by a performing monkey. A child plays the erhu, a traditional Chinese instrument, in the left panel, creating a soundtrack to the dreamscape, but there are no strings that resonate with music. It is a dream of a past that no longer exists. Incidentally, the graphic elements painted onto the bird priest scroll are the same pattern that appears in the background of Gaia, Yellow Earth, the stained glass sculpture at the center. Descendants, Blue Wood, 2019 The character of the Descendant appeared as I began to dream up the show Eternal Journey. After visiting the museum situated in Lote World Tower, the extreme height of the building left a lasting impression. I began to think of the fairy tale, Jack and the Beanstalk, where poor young Jack climbs into the skies of a magical beanstalk, steals from a giant, and escapes poverty. The descendant is forever falling through the sky. As long as he is dreaming, he is safe, his journey through the atmosphere softened and buoyed by the petals of giant flowers. There is no ground, just an endless sky projecting from his imagination. But if he wakes up, he will plunge fast into the earth and face plant into reality. He is drifting in an everlasting dreamfall. He is not Asian enough for Asia and not American enough for America. So, he is just floating in between, a cultural castaway. 
Many of my friends have remarked that the character reminds them of my son. In fact, they say that I've been drawing him long before he was ever born. So, the descendant exists in an alternate reality of my own making. The walls between the dimensions are porous and allow for interactions between worlds. Soon, I will fully cross over and exist only in the descendant's world and my in the current dimension. Passage, Blue Wood, 2019 A large reed boat, overcrowded with refugees seeking asylum in some distant shore, floats in an acidic ocean. The design of the boat and passage is based on the reed boats of Lake Titicaca, made by the Uros indigenous people. The Norwegian ethnographer and adventurer Thor Heyerdahl built a series of reed boats, one of which was constructed by boat builders from Lake Titicaca, to demonstrate that ancient civilizations could have migrated and traded across the vast oceans. While also being a nod to the Raft of the Medusa by Jericho, the characters in the boat represent many cultural archetypes that are lost in an ocean that allows for economic trade, but deems dangerous the export and import of humanity and culture. But then, the boat can also be seen as an ark carrying the whole of humanity. Stranded on the boat together and unable to find safe harbor, the characters will have no choice but to eventually... Stampede, Blue Wood, 2019 Stampede references the painting 100 Horses by Giuseppe Castiglione and the Battle of Anghiari, a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci after Peter Paul Rubens. In the composition is a squad of eight horses, each with their own distinct rider. They are on their way to the next battle after having survived their last encounter with the enemy. The lines and washes, rendered in blue, are reminiscent of the glazes on Chinese porcelain. The transparency of the lines and exposed canvas has a fragile effect, but the sweeping lines contain an energy of motion. Descendants 1, 2, and 3, 2019 for this series of paintings that focus on the Descendant, the images were taken from the vertical interactive CG installation, Super Bloom, and turned into traditional paintings. I took screen captures of various moments in the CG animation, where the randomly generated flowers intersected the Descendant, and faithfully executed them as traditional paintings. I was interested in the dialogue between traditional and virtual depictions of my characters. The Descendant began as a pencil drawing, then it was sculpted in 3D, then animated in a program commonly used for video games called Unity, and then transformed into a traditional painting on canvas. So all these versions of The Descendant are part of his eternal journey of transformation. When these CG objects pass through each other, it's normally considered an error, but I like this ghostly effect of elements randomly colliding and intersecting each other. The flowers pierce his body, but he remains in a trance-like state similar to the spirit mediums called Ma Song in the Southeast Asia, who are able to pierce their cheeks and bodies in elaborate ways. Tiger, White Metal, 2019 Tiger White Metal is comprised of panels of etched copper and depicts a mother tiger with her cub. The copper has a deep patina that is covered with translucent layers of white paint. I'm a relatively new father, and the news of the separation of migrant children from their parents at the Mexico-U.S. border was quite shocking and troubling. Thus, the mother tiger is coming apart as unseen forces threaten them from beyond the borders of the composition, and she covers her child in a fierce embrace. The ground beneath them is fractured and shifting, and the tiger can't find stable foot. Whirlpool, Blackwater, 2019 the image of the spiral is an intuitive symbol that is used throughout history and reveals a path to self-realization and transformation. From spiral galaxies to the vortexes in our DNA, the flow of energy traces a familiar path within the self and radiates outward into the sublime. Carl Jung described the path to individuation as a spiral progression as we attempt to achieve an awakening of the consciousness. At the core of all of my work, is the attempt to contain a cyclone of energy in the composition. I'm constantly trying to direct and manipulate the energy of the drawing by balancing all of the elements through editing, erasing, and redrawing. But the whirlpool of activity has an unstoppable pull. Even though I try to temper and shape the energy in the work, it overwhelms any conscious direction and takes me down a spiraling path into the black waters of oblivion. I am constantly being pulled under the waters of my own creation. 
swim freely. Bathers, Black Water, 2019. A trio of nymphs bathe on a coral-colored rock surrounded by a turbulent sea. Like the fates or Macbeth's three witches, they weave together the narrative with their long black hair saturated with seawater. Their hair seemingly represents longevity and continuity, but there is a solitary figure in the background about to cut their hair with a pair of scissors. His face releases soba noodles, which represent longevity in Asian lore, but are also fragile and easily cut. The black shelled turtles the siren song. Gaia, Yellow Earth, 2019. For eternal journey, I wanted to create a large freestanding structure, a crystal, to act as the symbolic center of the show. According to O Bonse, the color yellow is oriented at the center and is associated with the element of earth. Glass is the perfect symbolic medium because it is made from molten sand. At the front of the piece is Gaia, the mother of all life. She grasps in her hands the head of two conjoined turtles, a cosmic being that both supports and contains the known world within its shells. The head of the twin turtles splits into fallopian tubes which excrete orbs of light. The tiger, on the opposite side of the sculpture, represents masculine yang energy, but he is distracted and chases a passing butterfly. Butterflies and bees, the pollinators of the world, make life possible as they transfer pollen from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma, allowing anthropomorphic plant buds to sprout and ripen on the vine, swollen and heavy. Vanity, 2008. Vanity is another painting that was done for the series of works called Kindling. The character sits at a vanity or dressing table. Her head is comprised of butterfly wings and the makeup that she applies creates not only the patterns in her face, but the butterfly wings themselves. A recurring motif in my work is a character that is painting and creating its own environment, drawing the composition with a brush. In a sense, my characters direct their own narrative and create their own worlds and I am only a witness to their acts of creation. Behind the character at the vanity is a folding screen, which splinters the composition into multiple dimensions. The painting is a surface caked in a heavy coat of makeup that shapes and contours our visual experience, seductive in its surface, while hiding a beneath. Crickets, 2008. Crickets is a vision of the apocalypse as a mother embraces her child afflicted by a disease from biblical times. In the distance, a miniature volcano spews smoke and sulfur into the atmosphere. In the past, I have made a few paintings that explore maternity. Perhaps motherhood is a natural progression from the numerous depictions of muses that have appeared in my work. The mother figure can be equated to creation, as life originates in the womb, and the father figure can be equated to the sky, as a unifying, all-encompassing entity. Since creation is a feminine attribute, destruction can be ascribed to the masculine. The poisonous, darkened sky that's caused by the volcano destroys everything on Earth, while the mother creates and nurtures life from within. The cricket rests on the flower, a new life emerging from within the mother's mouth. The hard, black exoskeleton of the cricket contrasts with the soft floral forms hinting at the interplay between repulsion and generation. Hunting Party, 2009 The Hunting Party was painted in 2009, a time when I was working much more with oil paint and exploring different types of mark making. The paintings during this period were more expressive and abstract, but still represented a constructed landscape of the subconscious. Hunting Party is an expedition into the inner world, with various phantoms and animals emerging from the riot of shapes and colors, and being eaten by the environment. The wide panoramic format is meant to lead the viewer on an epic side-scrolling journey. At the time, this was the largest painting I had ever made, and unlike most of my previous work, was not made with a detailed plan. There was a lot of confusion and restless energy in this painting, but it remains an important piece in my body of work and shows the exploration of marks, texture, and scale that things. Aurelians 2016. The term Aurelian refers to someone who is interested in butterflies. It also refers to Aurelian, the Roman emperor from 270 to 275 AD, who ascended to the throne through the military from humble beginnings. 
Therefore, the use of the term may come from the idea that great things can emerge from lowly or modest sources, like how the butterfly emerges from a chrysalis after beginning life as a caterpillar. The etymology of Aurelian is related to aureolius, which means golden, or golden in nature. So, the three young girls in Aurelians are surrounded by a golden summer sky. They chase butterflies as a part of a childhood ritual, the summers fading away as they transform into adults. In fact, I remember that there used to be many more insects around when I was a child growing up and playing in the woods. Insects would constantly invade the house and backyard, and the spring and summer would bring swarms of fireflies and bees. Now I don't see many insects around, so it comes as no surprise that a recent report says that 40% of the world's population of insects are in decline. Quite sad. But recently, Los Angeles experienced an unusually massive butterfly migration due to the heavy rains. Swarms of butterflies flew through Los Angeles and over the freeways as they journeyed up to Northern California. This particular species of butterfly is called the Painted Lady, and I thought of the Aurelians trying to capture the butterfly in my memory. Adrift 1, 2015 Adrift was created during a time when I was between homes. I had just returned to Los Angeles after living abroad for a couple of years and had to search for a new place to work and live. The painting depicts a woman moored on a rock, surrounded by large pieces of Taihu stone, or Chinese scholars' rocks, being battered by waves. The rocks have been vandalized with colorful graffiti, not only as a defiant act against tradition, but as a way to alter one's perspective of these cultural objects of contemplation. A hawk comes to the rescue bringing pieces of driftwood from which the woman can build a raft to make her escape. A long red branch, a piece of coral, is the ore that she will use to steal waters. Pagoda, 2012 I'm always searching for new and interesting ways to express my line work in a grand scale. With Pagoda, I had created an intricate ink drawing and then had the lines engraved into wood panels. The panels were each individually painted by applying white ink with a roller. The cracking of the paint was an accident, but I loved the effect. By tiling the work, I could enlarge the original drawing and also temper the wild composition with a grid of lines. The images flowed from me in an improvisational manner. I began with a very rough and shapeless sketch, but the images crystallized into detailed form as soon as I applied ink. The imagery flows from one part of the composition into all corners, as if they were the conscious. Bouquet, 2016 Bouquet was exhibited as a key painting in the recent museum exhibition Juxtapose and Superflat, a vibrant survey of work by contemporary artists curated by the renowned Japanese artist Takashi Murakami, along with Evan Priko, editor-in-chief of Juxtapose Art and Culture magazine at the Vancouver Art Gallery in 2016. To commemorate the exhibition, Bouquet was also featured on the cover of the September 2016 issue of Juxtapose. Expanding upon Murakami and Juxtapose magazine's interest in flattening high and low cultures, the exhibition included work by artists whose practice has been shaped by a variety of subcultures including skate, surf, graffiti, street art, comics, design, illustration, painting, and digital and traditional arts. According to Murakami, the catalyst for Juxtapose and Superflat, according to Murakami, the catalyst for Juxtapose and Superflat was conversations he had with me and Preco during my show, Zugzvang, and Murakami's Gallery, 2015. Prada. I've worked with Prada numerous times since 2007, with two major collections for 2008 spring-summer and 2018 spring-summer. Our first collaboration began as a digital wallpaper design for the New York and Los Angeles Epicenter stores, which then turned into another mural-sized piece for the 2008 spring-summer runway show in Milan. The drawings were applied onto clothing, handbags, shoes, advertising, store displays, and packaging. Picking up on the abundance of fake fur and textures in the 2007 fall-winter collection, the mural Florid begins on the right-hand side with a character Mary, who is searching for her lost little lamb. She journeys through a Bashian landscape of carnivorous flowers and fantastical creatures before finding her lamb in a distant shore hungry for its shepherd's milk. The Milan mural features many of the same nymphs exploring a panoramic garden of delights, with a giant praying mantis stalking about, satellites surveilling the landscape, 
and a sea turtle being piloted from within. Tremble Blossoms, 2008. The title Tremble Blossoms comes from a phrase in Ode to Psyche, a poem by the English romantic poet John Keats. This was Prada's first ever animated film, and I wrote this story and storyboarded the short film based on the world created in the murals for the 2008. Traveler, 2018. There's an old engraving by a draftsman from the Netherlands, Heinrich Hondius, called A Unicorn Chasing Lizards from a Pond in 1610. The unicorn points its horn down into the pond and drives away various snakes and frogs. Some months after I had finished Traveler, I saw this etching by Hondius at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art for the first time, and I was amazed at the similarities between the two images. Not only was the pose of the unicorn the same, my painting even had a frog at the bottom near the colorful soup of colors being stirred up by the unicorn's horn. Sometimes I feel as if I'm traveling through time and channeling alternate dimensions with my work, since it frequently feels out of place and out of time in the context of the contemporary art world. Perhaps there's an echo of Hondius that remains in the consciousness of the universe, and I have subconsciously inherited the Fables After I finished art school in 2001, I was adrift in New York. I watched the Twin Towers fall from my apartment in Brooklyn, and I left an internet job on Wall Street after the dot-com bubble burst. Having been rejected by every major magazine and book publisher, and without any prospects for freelance work, I decided to present my work to DC Comics. I never thought I could work in the comics industry due to its technical demands, but it turned out that the surreal images in my portfolio that were rejected by traditional publishers were perfect for Vertigo, the mature imprint of DC Comics. I was offered the first few covers of a new series called Fables, and thus began a seven-year journey into the commercial art world. Fables featured traditional fairy tale characters in a contemporary context, with characters like Snow White, the Big Bad Wolf, and Red Riding Hood living in uptown Manhattan. Eventually, I was creating multiple covers every month for different titles, and each assignment was an opportunity to experiment and refine different techniques. The covers were a playground for different graphic ideas, combining traditionally drawn and painted elements with digitally created assets. This crossover between traditional and digital methods still happens in my work today, though at a much different scale and in different mediums. The covers were a laboratory of images, and by viewing the archive, it's possible to see how all the current work is derived from these early experiments and movie posters. In 2017, I was asked to create posters for three major feature films at the same time, Mother, The Shape of Water, and Blade Runner 2049. The three projects explored the entire range of my skill set, from drawing to painting to digital techniques. For The Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro drew a very simple doodle for me, a yin-yang symbol of a woman and monster in a tight embrace, completing each other in form and spirit. Working from that basic idea, I created a more elaborate charcoal drawing of the characters clinging to each other underwater while seaweeds surge around them in a lyrical composition. The use of charcoal as a medium for the poster references a character in the movie who also makes charcoal drawings of the monster. For Mother, Darren Aronofsky and I went through a variety of different ideas and sketches and eventually settled upon a lush portrait of Jennifer Lawrence surrounded by nature while she presents the viewer with her bloody, beating heart. The background was inspired by the landscape and botanical paintings of Martin Johnson Heed, and the depiction of Jennifer offering her heart is inspired by the paintings of Frida Kahlo and the ceramics of Jessica Harrison. Hidden throughout the composition are little objects and clues that refer to various important symbols in the film. Blade Runner 2049 was purely digital and drawn on an iPad. In contrast to the previous depictions of the Blade Runner universe, in contrast to the previous depictions of the Blade Runner universe, the marketing team asked me to evoke the mythological aspects and visual poetry of the movie. I took inspiration from the photography of Roger Deakins, the importance of light as a character in the film, the interplay of architecture and the natural world, and the motif of rain and water. The extreme scale of the characters is an inquiry into the nature of humanity 
and the reflection of the architectural and figurative elements in the water is a meditation on those ideas. The color also becomes symbolic, the reflection of the tree as a crimson circulatory system, the red of the girl's flesh, and the brutal blue of Hi everyone, my name is Juhan Kim. I am the director of the film The Divine Fury. We've had the honor of having the world-renowned artist James Jean to create the poster for our upcoming film. The Divine Fury is the story of our martial arts champion Yong Hu, who lost his father as a child, joining forces with an exorcism priest, Father An, in their struggle against diabolic spirits. There are, however, ambiguities as to exactly which characters inhabit such spirits. In creating the poster for the movie, I wanted Mr. Jean to evoke the sense of an epic journey within the story's universe. Mr. Jean drew inspiration from the composition and stylistic choices of Drew Sturgeon and the brothers Hildebrandt, who were behind such film postures as those for Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and The Lord of the Rings. In the special poster for The Divine Fury, Mr. Jean sought to portray the hero as locked in a struggle between good and evil, set in the present world populated by a multitude of spirits. In doing so, the artist placed special emphasis on the character's hands, a main motive in the film as they reach towards their souls. He made the unconventional choice of painting over photography as a medium for the project. The resulting image is imbued with a spectacular sense of fantasy and the supernatural, illustrating the age-old theme of the eternal war between good and evil.